Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Get On With It Expeditions Conquistador, part of the rewarding the warders opportunity I offered last year. This game was brought to you by Bullfrog1983, I think. This was in a list of several games uh, he suggested for me to play for this one hour. And I chose to do this one. I have had considerable interest in this game since it was released. I followed along with it. I've read the manual several times, perhaps like once a month. And I just did a refresher course before I pulled up the game for the first time here. Uh, I did go through the game and do the language selection uh, thing to get us started, but I haven't played any. I have briefly seen the game played on uh, SKS's uh, live stream channel. I've talked with him about it, you know, my interest with the game, and he was pretty down on it. Um, I only watched him play briefly uh, in Hispaniola, uh, doing a little bit of like tutorial stuff, but I looked away pretty fast because I wanted to explore this game on my own. And by and large, this will be a blind playthrough, uh, despite my intelligence and reading the manual a few times, uh, I'm looking to discover what comes up in the game on my own. So if you could refrain from revealing anything about, you know, upcoming game mechanics, what I'll encounter or experience, I would appreciate that, and failure to do so may result in a block. I've proven I'm more than capable of doing that in the past. Uh, this was a Kickstarter game, released last year. I think the creator was Logic Artist? Uh, I can't quite remember that for sure. Uh, so, this is a strategic game. It's also a tactical game, which involves tactical turn-based combat. Uh, harkening back to maybe Heroes of Might and Magic, uh, King's Bounty. Uh, maybe not so much the older one as like the newer King's Bounty. And uh, since I'm such a fan of st the strategic and tactical mindset. I wanted to, uh, to apply it. Besides, this covers like a historical era that's not talked about much in entertainment media. For good reason. We're going to be playing as a conquistador who has set off from Spain to, to visit uh, the New World. <laughs> And uh, from how the instruction manual sets it, and from what little I have know and read about the game, you're open-ended in uh, how you end up dealing with the discoveries of the New World. Of course, historically, you've had explorers come over for all sorts of purposes, and they've handled the natives uh, in different ways. But by and large, the native populaces were crushed by European explorers. It completely decimated and annihilated. And, uh... There is a lot of... Blood, you could say, on the Europeans' hands. Um, on... Not necessarily my hands, or... My ancestors' hands, uh, given how uh, we immigrated after the fact, but... It's just that... Cognizance... Of uh, what has been done. Now, with all that depressing shit aside, and with the credits finished, because I figure it'd be nice to see the credits, go ahead and go through my options here. I'm gonna have to learn these controls as I go. Uh, it'll probably take me some time, maybe even the entire series, to learn hotkeys, as I'm doing live commentary and it's a distraction. Gameplay-wise, language is gonna be English. We'll leave the tutorial shit on for now, and for the time being, we'll leave combat speed at times one, and I'm not gonna mess with that. Difficulty-wise, We've got a few standard difficulty options, and if you want to read those descriptions, you can quickly pause through. I can't mouse wheel them. I think we're going to be doing our own custom difficulty. I was looking through these whenever I was beginning my initial game setup. I like starting with my base on normal. I'm not sure whether I want to fuck with any of this. However, the concept of enemy intelligence I want that set to maximum. This is going to create for someone like me a very punishing situation, uh, which will force me to learn the tactics of the game quickly. 
I, I like the concept of the AI intelligence, you know, controlling what they can control being the best. I don't want them to derp. Uh, I want them to move intelligently. Perhaps, uh, perhaps I could do something like, say, there. But no, I like uh, Relentless. Uh, hopefully that doesn't, you know... I just want them to use their special abilities and focus fire and be intelligent, challenging opponents that will make me very angry. <laughs> I say this and I'm not sure it's a good idea, but uh, I worry, you know, many of these tactical games, the AI can end up being too easy. And uh, even though I'm doing live commentary, I do have confidence in my brain. Worst case, I'll get my ass kicked. You all will scream at me in the comments. We'll go about our days together. Because I like to make you all angry, too. I'm not going to mess with any of those options. And sound, I might have to change that in the future. Your volume for the game is currently higher than my volume. Uh, hopefully there's a good enough balance. Let's go ahead and click on New Game here. It, I did make sure that was good. New Game, then. Uh, we have to start in Hispaniola. Hispaniola first. Uh, before we can go to Mexico. This is like the tutorial area. Uh, I do not want to do Iron Man mode. For the purposes of recording, Iron Man mode can really derail a series. That's my opinion. Because if for whatever reason the recording gets lost, or eaten, or corrupted, or ravaged in some fashion, it's hard to, to come back from that. Besides, I don't want to hold myself to this stipulation. You know, I might want to reload. I'm not making an Iron Man swear. We'll see. Now, we can start first with character creation, uh, which first allows us to create our own character. And I figure I'll go with uh, my long standby here, Griffith Reaper. And I can be male or female. I'll be male. I'll have to also retype my name in. This is where you choose what kind of conquistador you wish to be. Your choices in this menu and the following will influence your opportunities and challenges throughout the game. But don't be alarmed. The decisions you make here may make the game harder, but they cannot make it impossible. The current screen lets you set up your own character, gender, name, and skills. Your skills will influence your access to and consumption of resources such as medicine and rations, and skills will also open up new options during events and conversations. You can always move your cursor over icons to see what they mean. It is recommended that you choose two or three skills to specialize in without lowering any of your skills completely, but feel free to follow your instincts if they tell you otherwise. On the next screen, you will have to select the people to bring on your expedition to the New World. The different character types provide substantial bonuses to your skills, and different characters have different strengths, weaknesses, and abilities in a battle. Each character also has three personality traits which determine what will cause them to lose or gain morale throughout your travels. So first off, we have Tactics here, which is used to change the starting situation in a battle to your advantage. Determines the amount of items you can bring into combat, and how far from your troops you can place them. By the way, this is really a setup and an introduction video, so if you want to really cut your teeth on gameplay, uh, you can watch someone else's series. Death Heaven 13, I think, has completed a series of this already on his channel. I'll link you to that in the video description. Um, if you're a veteran of this game, and you are inspired by whatever reason to want to help me, reconsider, really. I like to teach uh, games to myself, and particularly in a situation where I'm operating blind here, and I don't want the game future, like, future mechanics or situations to like, exactly be spoiled for me. You know, reconsider, maybe find something uh, more valuable to do with your time than watch this. I am nothing if not honest. We have Diplomacy here, which affects your chance of success in negotiation and cultural exchanges. Healing, which reduces the medicine cost of treating injured expedition members. Survival, which improves the results of hunting, reducing daily use of rations. Scouting, which increases your daily movement and occasionally grants better information about battles. And Leadership, which bolsters the starting morale of your people and raises their maximum morale, reducing the risk of mutiny. We'll say that my character uh, some, you know, privileged son of a minor noble. I'm not exactly sure of the background for the character. We might get into that whenever we go to Hispaniola. Hispaniola. Uh, my pronunciation, by the way, also gonna be shaky. Primarily English speaker. We're going to be encountering, 
either Spanish names or native names <laughs> in cities and locations. The Spanish I can sort of wing with my high school backing and going to Puerto Rico. The native ones, not so much. So, I figure what the hell we'll do here is, uh, I'll gear myself for the possibility that I might be getting myself into a war situation, and I'll follow the recommendation as provided here on the guide. We'll take tactics up to seven, survival up to seven, and scouting up to seven. Scouting, which increases your daily movement, and I'm always a big fan of, uh, of better movement uh, in a game. Uh, the maneuverability is such an amazingly powerful thing when you get into like strategic type situations. My maximum is 10. So I can take that all the way up to 10. I don't know whether that's the best thing to do. Survival, which improves the results of hunting, reducing daily use of rations. I don't know how much of a big deal that will be. Uh, tactics also sounds pretty sweet though. So, we'll go with a scout heavy type thing. I want movement. Uh, occasionally grants better information about battles. We have a slightly bigger emphasis on tactics, which uh, helps me change the starting situation to my advantage, and maybe we can do some survival, or maybe we can round up a bit there. Yeah, that's better. That's more even. I might be getting myself into a horrible situation, so we'll do something like that. And now I need to select my followers. I could have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people with me here. And we have four major, five major categories, excuse me, doctors, which uh, are poor healers, but they're your support characters who patch people up. We have hunters, which do ranged attacks, and outside of combat, they help you hunt. We have scholars, which are the tinkerers. They can do, like, support-type things of weakening enemy units and buffing allied units, I think. We have scouts, which uh, are very quick. They're a roguish-type character. And uh, non-combat situations, they can help make sure you don't get your ass kicked. And scout soldiers are there to guard your camp in out-of-combat situations, and uh, they're your tanks. Or, you know, your musket firers, whatever it is you're looking about. So, uh, I might pick two of each at the start here. Two, four, six, eight, and that is ten. So, let's go with the doctors first, because they seem very important. They, ha they all have personality traits, as well as biographies. I don't think I'm going to read those so much, just to try to get through this quicker. I don't know. It seems like I'd be depriving myself of, uh, of awesome things. I like how Pedro looks here. She's a racist, which, you know, I don't want to close off my options going forward. Because that just, this is, that just seems bad. At the same time, I'm not sure whether I want someone who's dedicatedly an open-minded individual. For example, I really like, uh, Pedro here. Uh, an aggressive type individual. I'm not sure whether I'll be passing up opportunities to fight. Uh, proud sounds like something I'll really be reinforcing, particularly if I end up reloading a lot. And adventurous, which... No. Uh, I plan on doing some adventure, that's why I'm playing this game. There we go. Now, our second individual, she's racist, cautious, and adventurous. An adventurous, cautious person. Suppose she wouldn't like unnecessary risks. Dispassion and cynicism are troubling, but her skills are flawless and unmatched. A somber and quiet man. Okay. She was a local doctor in your area where she excelled particularly in stitching wounds. Okay, so I have some familiarity with her then. You can make any person feel welcome in his company. Now, I'm also noticing there are different weapons that they're capable of wielding. And one person, uh, Pedro and Sanchez here have training in the Arquebus, while uh, Marisol and Antonio are trained here with the bow. I imagine the bow is more accurate, uh, but deals less damage. Accuracy is kind of a big deal. 
Oh, hey, I can see the values up there. Hmm. No, no, it's showing that they have the same accuracy. But I might not exactly want to have them emphasize ranged combat anyway. Peaceful and altruistic. I don't think I'll exactly want to go a, uh, a peaceful direction here if I'm going to be aggressive. I want to pick someone who's fairly, uh, fairly, uh, compatible here. And... I'll go ahead and take Teresa. I mean, I do like, uh, Antonio here. How cool he looks, but apparently we have a connection with, uh, Teresa here already. And if the bow ends up being an inferior weapon, if they have the same accuracy, then I figure I'll stick with this. Moving on to Hunters. Bonito Blanco. Aha. Hmm? Uh -huh. I see. Then we have Carrillo. Raul. Racist, a narcissist, and adventurous. What does narcissistic do? May gain morale if chosen for a task or promoted to a higher rank but may lose morale if passed over for promotion. I'm not sure whether I want that to be a thing, except for people I would regularly promote. Are either you narcissistic? No, he is. So if I picked Raul, I'd want to promote him regularly. I'm not sure whether he'd be worth promoting regularly. We have Adriana, who is peaceful, altruistic, and proud. She uses a bow. The Arquipus here definitely deals more damage and appears to have the same uh, accuracy. Huh. That goes against... Ooh, she's greedy. An aggressive and open-minded... What does greedy do? May gain morale if you gain new resources. Yeah, Briella, you don't sound that bad. Huh. Cautious, proud, and pious. Hmm. I already have a cautious individual, right? So that wouldn't be so bad to take, and I already have a proud individual. Alejandro. Courageous, proud, and pious. Then you wield an arc with us. Okay. Sifting through these two here. Uh, I'm just going through like raw values. Bows may end up being, you know, even more incredibly, uh, incredibly awesome. And to be honest, I think I'd rather have a bow, even though it would take more years of training. Considering how we're going to be marching into, you know, lush, verdant jungles and forests, it's gonna be harder to keep my, my arquebus shot safe than it is my bows, right? Besides, I can raid arrows off of the natives. They all have the same movement. Really just goes down to that and, of course, their traits. I think I'll take... Courageous Proud, Cautious Proud, and then Courageous Proud. I don't have anyone who's courageous. I do have someone who's cautious. So I guess I'd rather have you tie in together. And then she's aggressive and open-minded. So that shares some things. Whereas that shares things too. And that does not. Oops. I want that order to be the way I put it. So, okay. We'll pick in Alejandro. A greedy sounds like it would be dangerous for a long-term situation. And then we'll uh, pick in Gabriella. Hopefully, her greed does not bring down the uh, us. <laughs> the us. We get the scholars here now. We have Blanca Aleg Alegria. 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 We'll go with that. She is a uh, racist, altruistic, and pious. Expose weakness. Every regular ranged attack for this character reduces the target's defense by 10%, even if it's a miss. Hmm. All the scholars have that. Okay. 
So we already have a greedy person. Well, I suppose, I don't think age is gonna be an issue. We do have old man Alvarado here, but I think it's okay for the doctors to be a little bit aged. And perhaps a scholar, too. Peaceful, courageous, I don't think I want someone who's peaceful. Let's be honest here. I... I might do some bad things to some people. <laughs> Aggressive, but cautious. Interesting. The means always justify the ends for this individual, and the lore and secrets of the New World will be revealed to him, even if it means torturing every soul he finds. See, Mercedes, Julio. You know, all my obsessing over here probably doesn't mean anything, but these are characters and personalities who are going to be with me for the rest of this game. And I'm having great fun and messing around with this. I do like his face. He might win on face and description alone. That makes me a bad person. <laughs> Open-minded and greedy. Well, that does share all three traits with people we already have. Same is true of that. At this point, I mean, we already have a lot of uh, combination traits. I don't exactly want to emphasize greed, though. But I don't exactly want to emphasize racism. I think I'd rather have greedy people than racist people. And I definitely don't want peaceful people. Looks like I'm with you two, then. Hmm. Well. But then I wouldn't have a female version. <laughs> I don't care. Merit. Merit is what matters. <laughs> Scouts-wise, we have Montego. He's a sword. All those people to this point have been wielding, uh, daggers. But now we get into sword people. Daggers and swords. So we have, uh, Montego, who's a cautious, adventuring, peaceful type. Francisco, who's a peaceful guy. Daniela, who is aggressive. Reyna, who's narcissistic. Federico who is a courageous racist. He's also 56. The oldest person in your expedition. Ah. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> How about that? I mean, I already have a bunch of greedy people. Why not have more people who are greedy, right? It's probably not that bad. I mean, it's a vice. We're going to be getting a lot of things. Yeah. And... Someone who's not narcissistic. You're open-minded and altruistic. I don't have anyone who's peaceful on the team, right? Nope, no one who's peaceful. In that case, nuts to you two. Nuts to you, Daniela. Okay. And now we're down here. Maybe I should uh, gimp like some of the scholars and scouts options for more soldiers, but just playing around here, folks. Sierra got a lot of soldiers here. Figure I'll go ahead and go balance for the time being, and if things work out horribly, well, then it'll, we will have learned. Okay. Do they all have the same weapons? No. Some of them use pole arms. Some of them use swords. Do any of them use bows? No. So what's the difference between a pole arm and a sword? 
fine. Sword looks like it deals more critical damage. But the pole arm deals more overall damage. Kaloka. Peaceful. Hmm. Again, I think we'll stay away from peaceful types. You're altruistic, that's not bad. Juan Ortega. Huh. All right. Maestro Ortega. All right. Wow. Young Rosalia is the daughter to your father's most trusted sword arm. Because her father had a wish for a son. Okay. But she's peaceful. You kind of scare me. <laughs> and I really can't... Really can't... Pinpoint why. Can we avoid narcissistic people? Narcissistic sounds like it would be dangerous. But greed? Oh no. No, no, that definitely wouldn't be dangerous at all. Huh. But I might also like two polearm wielders. Ah. Might not be able to get what I want in everything. Damn it. Well, Rita. Oh, we got lots of history there. I like history. Okay. Oh, we got some history there, too. Shit. <laughs> so much history. Ortega there. Might, might might have fun, you know, experimenting with a sword instead of a polearm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge the man. I'd rather judge the man more on his traits than on his passive abilities. Mm. Well, someone who's narcissistic isn't inherently a problem if I regularly promote them. Is anyone else narcissistic? No. You could be our only narcissist. Oh, alright. There's someone else. He's got a pole arm. Now nah, stay away from races. We are not gonna judge the people inherently because we think they're an inferior race. We'll judge them because we're more advanced than they are. <laughs> it is our god given right to conquer them. Holy shit, I have spent so much time on the screen. I don't have a timer right now. I just feel it. Yeah, Bernardo. Yeah, our narcissist there. He's open-minded. Okay. Now, that balance of soldiers, scholars, doctors, hunters, and scouts, uh, they give me a plus two uh, per individual. And because of that, I actually end up being balanced as a result. No. I don't exactly have a whole lot of leadership here. But, you know, maybe I'm just not the leader type here. The year is 1518, a year before Hernán Cortés would be elected captain of the third expedition to the South American mainland, where he would overthrow the Aztec Empire. But that, that will not happen, because you have beaten him to the punch. You are the eldest child of a Spanish nobleman, and you yourself hold the title of Hidalgo? With your father's backing, you have been the leader of a successful hermandad, meaning brotherhood back in the old world, a peacekeeping association of armed individuals which protected the countryside around your father's town. During this time, you demonstrated an aptitude for leadership and strategy that earned you the respect of the people under your command, but it was a time for a greater but it was time for a greater challenge. With the king's permission, in, in your father's financial support, you purchased a ship and selected a crew from, from the best of the brothers and sisters in your hermandad. Together, you are off on the long and arduous journey to explore the new world. In your cargo hold, you bring rations, medicine, equipment, and assorted valuables. You must first make a stop on the Caribbean island of Hispaniola, under Spanish domain since 1496. Here you will hire servants or buy slaves, rest and restock, and gain what information you can about the new world. 
After five weeks on the Atlantic Ocean, your people gather on the deck as the call, LAND AHOY, rings from the, from the rigging. In a clear afternoon, gulls screeching in the wake of your ship, you sail into the port of Santo Domingo, the seat of Spanish colonial rule in the New World. 1518. That year, the Maria Teresa left Spain and set sails for Santo Domingo. Righto. Each of us had our reasons for going, but on the sea, they did not matter. The fraternity was our family, and we followed our capital. In the worst moments, we learned who we could trust with our lives. The travels only strengthened our resolve. When we finally glimpsed the shores of Hispaniola on the horizon, relief and excitement washed over us. Our hearts filled with the promise of adventure. Our welcome was far from warm, however. The Gobernador disbanded our group and striped our Capitan of Common. If we were to continue, the Capitan would need to win his favor. It was only the first of many challenges. We have a chronicler with us. Hunters are your best ranged units, but very weak in melee combat. We have a mix of everything. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass, right? So, let me go ahead and actually save the game here. That was LGWI... Post-00... Zero zero, ah, whatever. I can't make dashes. Now I'm going to go ahead and, uh, see how that all sounded, and whenever we come back, we might actually play the game. Welcome to Expeditions Conquistador, everyone.